Hello everybody, Melanie Taylor here, the Director of Education at Eat, Breathe, Thrive, and I'm once again very excited to meet with one of our researchers for the Eat, Breathe, Thrive seven-week series study. Today I have the pleasure of meeting with Wendy Geiker, who is a Clinical Associate Professor at the University of Buffalo and the Co-Director of Training of the Doctoral Program in Counseling and School Psychology. Wendy's primary research interests are in the areas of mindfulness and self-care, with an emphasis on practical applications in both clinical and community populations. Wendy's international work includes research and consultation with the Africa Yoga Project and the United Nations Foundation. Wendy is also a yoga teacher and board member for the Yogis in Service, and currently teaches yoga to veterans at the Buffalo VA Hospital. In addition, Wendy maintains a private practice specializing in mindfulness-based interventions. Wow. I'm really, I was reading that earlier. I was like, lots of really great things in there. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know a bit about you. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you again for taking time to talk with us today. So happy to be here, Melanie. Thank you so much. Now, I know you're in Massachusetts. How's the weather out there? I know it's been a little bit cold in your area recently. How are you doing? So, so I'm actually in, in Buffalo, which is, okay. I don't know, I think arguably like uh, worse, um, you know, so coming off, we've had a little bit of a tough winter. We we had the, the um, blizzard around the holiday, around the Christmas holiday. Um, and then on this past Monday, we experienced an earthquake, which is oh. quite rare in Buffalo. And what I am hearing is that it 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 was like a high three on the on the Richter scale, which I believe is the highest recorded earthquake in in our city's history. Mm-hmm. So it's been an eventful um, and stressful and tough uh, winter. It's kind of living up to like the bad, the bad uh, reputation. I've got that. And thank you for correcting me. It's funny. I was looking at Buffalo and somehow Boston came out of my mouth. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in Canada where traditionally it's a lot colder, but we haven't had as cold of a weather that you guys are experiencing in the East. So I hope things go better and warm up for you soon. Um, I'd love to hear a bit about you. So if you want to tell me um, what led up to the work that you do, what what sort of drove you into being all of these things that you are doing? What what got you here? Yeah, yeah. So um, I am in my 12th year at the University at Buffalo, but I haven't always researched yoga and mindfulness. Um, it, and really, um, in preparing for chatting with you, I did do a little bit of a reflection and kind of looking at my my timeline um, at the University of Buffalo. And really, it my life took this dramatic um, change when I started practicing yoga myself. And so I am I am not like a lifelong practitioner of yoga. I took my first yoga class um, in 2016. And I, I've been at UB since 2011. Um, so that's kind of where my, my life changed. And so it, it sort of started with a personal experience of, of me actually um, starting my own yoga practice um, and then seeing the sort of drastic and immediate changes positively that it was having on, on me. And then um, not by chance, but the first yoga class I took was with, um, a colleague of mine also at the University of Buffalo, uh, Dr. Catherine Cocatone. And, um, and so we just naturally started talking about yoga. Um, and she had already begun researching, um, it as well. And so, so then I just, it was sort of this natural, um, union between me and, um, and the work that she was already doing. And it kind of just has has grown from there, but it did definitely start with my own personal practice of of yoga. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, just just the authenticness of I think from lived experience comes a lot of question, and I find most of us are like, "Why is this impacting me the way that it is? I want to know more." And as researchers, I can see how that tying together with the other work that you did would have been really intriguing. So I'm glad you took a class with Catherine. Yes, absolutely. You know, and so to have that exactly what you're saying, like a lived experience. So I could tell right away, I 
I um, was steadier. I had more patience. I was calmer. I felt strong. I felt grounded. I wasn't as reactive. So to have those lived experiences and then wanting to know more, ask the question, the why questions, like what are the the sort of, you know, research type questions of what are these, these mechanisms of change? What is actually going on? I, I know something is, that's really good, but what exactly is that? Um, so we can better identify that to then be able to kind of spread that um, and share the tools of, of yoga, but also to be able to talk about it in, in a specific kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the part of the work that you guys have done and continue to do that allows us to talk about it in places where maybe we haven't been able to before. Um, mm -hmm. Having that, it, we'll talk a bit more about that in the study, but having that um, scientific foundation around the, what we've experienced firsthand to actually be able to show it that it's not just me, it's reproducible, which is right. I think a really important thing about research. Yeah, yeah. And especially with psychology, you know, sometimes um, psychological studies and the study of psychology, you know, it kind of gets critiqued because it's like, you know, sometimes considered a soft science or and sometimes just not well understood. And so I think um, to, to really kind of think of it in a research kind of mind to ask the questions of why, how, um, that's what's going to strengthen the, the field and then propel it forward to be able to kind of really specifically and intentionally share um, findings and um, specifics about what, what does work for and for whom. Yeah, oh, it's lovely. So uh, what's the favorite part about the work that you do, whether that's your clinical practice or in research? What's your favorite part about it? favorite part I mean I don't know I might have to say a couple um like I do so yes uh, as you can uh, imagine my role at UB is is multifaceted so I do teach um I also then research and then I do a little bit of um what we call service so kind of like administrative things um in the in the bio that you shared you mentioned some of those things, right? Like I do program uh, direct, um, but but some of that administrative stuff, like it, honestly, it, it does not come naturally, as naturally as, as some of the other things. Um, so when you first asked the question, what first popped into mind was the the love of, of teaching. Um, it, th my students, every time I go in to teach, they, they do energize me. Um, I'm, I'm a kind of a newer mom. I have two, um, younger kids, one and a half and four. And so sometimes I go into a day of teaching, you know, maybe not with the highest level of, of energy, you know, a little bit of sleep deprivation, all of that. Um, and, and, um, you know, nine times out of 10, I will feel more energized, more alive, um, more inspired, touched um, by by my students, their thoughtfulness, their level of preparation, their respect for each other, like their engagement with the material and the things that we're discussing, it, it is very very energizing. Um, so so that's the first thing that came to mind. Sort of that I do love I do love teaching. Um, maybe it's partly you know my both my parents they're now retired but they were teachers as well so. Maybe that had some little trickle down effect. Um, but then the other thing that uh, quickly came to mind too is the the my love for kind of that bi-directional sort of notion of research and, and practice. And so um, especially coming into this yoga and mindfulness work in the last seven or eight years, um, it's just been so wonderful and has provided so many amazing, enriching experiences to be able to say, for example, develop a program like, like EBT, um, help develop it and, and um, study it. But um, so, so to be able to develop a program and then deliver it and then, and then also research it to better understand kind of how did it go? Um, what were the surprises? If there were surprises, um, why do we why do we think that happened um, for for the better or for the worse? You know, and um, one of the things, one of the projects that sticks out to me 
um, again, kind of going back to your, your question was um, having the chance to develop a, a trauma-informed yoga teacher program with um, my colleague, Dr. Kukatone, and having the chance then to um, deliver that training to yoga teachers in uh, Kenya. Um, and so it was just so neat to collaborate with the Africa Yoga Project, where their model is so incredible, where, you know, they train yoga teachers to then deliver the yoga back out into their communities. And then they that provides then a means of, of a livelihood. And so to be able to come in um, to w collaborate with the Africa Yoga Project and give, I think that program that we gave, it was about a five day kind of intensive, you know, eight hours a day training um, that added this trauma informed layer to the teaching that they had already learned. Um, it was just so cool to, to, to be a part of that, to have these amazing discussions um, and then to also then study it and to see mm -hmm. both the, the feasibility um, as it, how it worked for the yoga teachers. And then we also studied um, how their yoga students in their new kind of trauma-informed classes, how they experienced the yoga classes. Mm, that sounds so, I, there's like a circle-ness to it, right? Like considering yes. what's needed, what might be helpful and being able to go back and hold ourselves um, to a measuring uh, view of how things really turned out. Um, I can see, and, and in hearing you talking about, there's such an excitement in like the lightness and joy and fulfillment that you're um, experiencing. It's you're hiding it very well. <laughs> kind of bleeding out your pores a little bit. That's really lovely <laughs> to hear. Um, and I remember seeing the the training you're talking about being um, talked about and stuff and, and uh, Catherine's um, social media and whatnot as well. So it's lovely to hear your experience about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like it's, it's, you know, goes down to like one of my, I don't know, top 10 um, trips and experiences of, of my life. Um, and then even after that trip, they were able to go again, a team from University of Buffalo. I think I, my, my little one was too young for me to, to travel that far and for that long, but a team from UB went back to deliver the similar training, um, again, with Africa Yoga Project, but this time to uh, to teachers in Rwanda. Um, and we mm -hmm. studied that again, and we saw yeah, great sure. findings there as well, you know, so it, it's it's neat to then get to kind of spread that and and, and be a part of, of that um, mm -hmm. in an ongoing way. Mm hmm. Yeah, it seems like a very rich experience. For sure. So I'd love to hear a bit about your role in the Eat, Breathe, Thrive study. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I can't even recall at the moment, maybe you know how Catherine and Chelsea met up. I'm sure it was at some sort of cool gathering of cool people, right? But yeah, but they, at a they, conference, they, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So naturally, they became, you know, fast friends um, because of their um, like-mindedness and, and similar missions with, with wanting to spread um, tools and, and movement and yoga-based tools um, with others. And so, so then we at the University of Buffalo linked up with uh, Chelsea and then um, got to train a team in the Buffalo area um, with the EBT um, program. And then, of course, being the uh, the research practitioners that we are, we wanted to study it. Um, so so that's how I got involved um, as being um, a co-leader on, on with on the research team with Catherine. Um, that's been my role with um, Eat, Breathe, Thrive ha has been as a, as a researcher. Um, and so we had a number of our doctoral students take on different aspects of, of um, studying EBT. And, um, and so I've gotten to also kind of mentor and, and supervise some of our doctoral students through their research um, of it. Mm, exciting. What um, either did you find was the most important aspect of what you found or what surprised you the most? I'll kind of give you an option between which one you want to answer there. I like options. Um, I would say 
I'll actually try to answer both. Um, I think the most important thing was how kind of feasible it, and it was from the participants, you know, like it, it is a rather involved comprehensive um, program. And so to, to gather data on the acceptability and the feasibility of um, EBT for it to be rated so highly um, as being not only enjoyable, but also meaningful and effective um, to me that that's huge. Um, and, and, you know, we did have a, a study then published with um, community in a community based participant way, both in the um, sample included participants, both in the US and and the UK. And that's been our published study so far. But as as you know, we also have studied it in, in other groups too. And and that finding of it being um, feasible ha has been consistent across different groups. So um, even we did a, a study of it that we're hoping to get published um, in the coming year um, with with athletes. You know, we're a Division One university, and um, we wanted to study it with athletes here at here at UB, and uh, and, and same thing. Um, it was found to be. Um, so highly um, received, um, both in kind of like quantitative measures as well as qualitative. Um, so, so I think that um, that that's huge um, for participants of all different sorts um, find it to be um, such a wonderful, meaningful, um, kind of life altering program. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, as a facilitator myself, as I listen to you talk about it, we, going back to that lived experience, I have the lived experience of being in the classroom with the participants, having them go through what they go through and sharing what they share, um, getting the emails during the program, after the program. I had one the other day that uh, it was, I think, my second program, so almost five years ago, of like, oh my goodness, I finally just got this particular part. Uh, and so hearing that that was one of my favorite parts about reading the study is hearing that that was reproducible, that it seems to be the broad experience and not the one-offs. I think that's, yeah. um, it's easy to pull those out and have them be part of your memory, but knowing that each time this, this course is taught, those same measures show up and truly that life altering experience that you're describing. Yes. Yes. And so then I will tie that into then the surprising finding. Um, so we measured not only kind of across time in the traditional sort of like pre-test, post-test kind of way, but one of the measures that we also did was sort of like a state-based measure, like immediately following the class. So we collected data right after each of the classes. And it was neat to even see effects there, um, like immediately after students were saying, um, oh my goodness, like this was so great. So not only did we have immediate sort of state-like um, uh, positive outcomes, but we also then studied long-term effects too. So not only pre, post, post being immediately after they finished the program, but then also six months later. Um, and most effects also still held at that six month follow-up mark. So how cool is that? <laughs> Uh, exactly. Like the sustainability that that's the life altering it. It starts um, a conversation with someone that I think doesn't really ever change. Even teaching it five years later, every time I teach it or support a facilitator in learning to teach it, I get something. I think it's sort of the neatest part about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, when is there anything that I haven't asked about that you'd like to share? Let's see. Um. I mean, I think I just want to just highlight kind of exactly what we just were saying about Eat, Breathe, Thrive, like that it just kind of hits so many different marks. Like there is this kind of internal experience, like like learning, um, being present in your body. There's the uh, kind of like psychoeducation component and also the movement component. But then I think the the power or like the magic of it too is in these other layers of the program too. For example, like being um, in some sort of group setting, right? So having just when you said, um, you know, people really, you as a facilitator, just kind of being touched and and um, uh, inspired by the participants. You know, I, I went through uh, the the beginning of a training too, and 
again, I can recall, I even have my workbook, right? Like to have some of the partner and the, and the small group discussions, there was, there was such, um, meaning, meaning made in those, in those discussions, um, that, that go beyond then, um, you know, the learning just kind of internally or, or on an individual basis. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it is sort of the magic of the program that then we've been able, you know, little by little to, to evidence with data and findings. So. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. Uh, thank you for saying that. And it's interesting as you were sharing that, it reminded me of earlier on, you're talking about how uh, you're impacted by your students and this aspect of being in community and not living life on our own in these isolated models is such an important part of our lives right now. And so thank you for highlighting that. Um, I want to thank you. I could sit here and chat with you all day. It's been lovely talking with you and getting to know a bit about you. Um, but I really want to thank you, you know, first for all the work that you put in, um, the clear passion that you have for this work. It's been really lovely to witness that, I think most for me today. Um, but thank you for sharing your thoughts with our audience and um, all of your hard work that um, I know is going to impact people for years to come. So thank you so much, Wendy, for being here uh, and for all of your work and passion. I appreciate it. You are so welcome. It has been wonderful uh, to have this chance to talk with you and to share my, my thoughts and my experiences.